hard to it's a hard act to follow. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. A lot of you have been sitting here for an hour already. We have actually been talking for 25 minutes already. I'm going to try really hard to get through the last of our slides to give you really good information, and then we'll jump right into questions. Okay? And then we have uh, Joe's actually sorting some of the question cards to make sure that David busts in some way. Or if you we are driving, and where are we driving from? We're actually driving from an apartment building. Which way are we facing? I think the apartment building is over that way, but it's just one block from here. I chose, uh, if you live in this neighborhood, it's 50 Carabao Court. Okay, specific building there, and I actually measured out, even if you take the shortcuts, you don't have to follow the roads, you just jump right into Shepherd and start walking, okay? The blue, the first bit, is the walking time, okay? At 1.2 meters per second, the average walking time. With all subway, we've got a lot of walking to get all the way over to Kennedy, which is the closest potential subway stop, most likely. Right? Remember, this is a made-up example. Okay? The red is the transfer time. That means getting out of the vehicle if you were in a vehicle and waiting for the next thing to show up, which might average out to three or four minutes. Okay? Google Maps uses four minutes for transfer time, so I decided to just use four minutes for everything. That way I wasn't picking one over another. Okay? And the green is the subway time. If we had a subway all the way from here at Kennedy, all the way over to Young Street, and that's what this is trip from that park building all the way to Young Street. It would be 15 minutes or so on the subway. I even gave the subway a little extra speed. I gave it 37 kilometers per hour, even though David told me it was 35, okay? The LRT plus subway, there's a little less walking because the stops are a little closer together, and there'd probably be one at Birchmount, okay? As opposed to going all the way over to Kennedy. There's still a lot of transfer time because you're transferring onto the LRT and then you're transferring onto the subway. So notice it's doubled, okay? Now that's just the average, okay? It could be a little bit less, could be a little, a little bit more, and it all depends on how things are designed. The green is the, is the current Shepherd subway, and the purple is the light rail line, okay? And the light rail line at 23 kilometers per hour will cover the distance from Bergenau all the way over to the Don Mills station in nine minutes. Okay. Right now, notice it's totally different. That's kind of turquoise color right there. 17 minutes, that's the bus. That's the current 85 Shepard bus. Okay? And I actually checked using the 190 rocket as well. And in rush hour, this was all done using rush hour timing. Okay? It works out the same. Okay? So we still have the same walking because we've got two transfers, the bus and the subway. We've got the same transfer time. We've got the same subway time, but much longer on the bus. So you can see there is an improvement there. There's a big improvement. Okay? Notice that the subway is a little bit faster, okay? but there is a huge benefit. We get, we get a big win from getting out of traffic. That's where the big win is. Okay? And then driving. For those of you who have to drive, on, who has to drive on Shepard during rush hour? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Someone? It's awful. It can be very, very busy. Absolutely. And construction, of course, has an impact on that. This is the rush hour timing. Actually, when I checked on Google Maps, it told me 28 minutes. So I checked again later, 15 minutes later, and it told me 23 minutes because Google actually checks the current traffic. And so that's the number that I used, okay? If the street was completely empty and you were following the law, you could drive it in 12 minutes. But that's only if you're the only car on Shepherd. That's kind of rare, okay? Does that turn include finding a parking space when you get there? Ah, <laughs> notice that I put five minutes of walking even though you're driving. That's because when you get to Young Street, you've got to put the car somewhere. And I figured five minutes was maybe a fair guess as to walking to your car, getting in it, and then finding a parking space and getting out of it. I know when I try to park, it's much further away. Okay. This, I'm actually going to just talk about really quickly because we are running out of time. Okay? I wanted to show you the cost comparison between all the different things. We've got the construction cost for all these different modes okay, in millions. And these are estimates because it really depends on a lot of things. Like if you're tunneling, if you're tunneling through sand, it's different than if you're tunneling, tunneling through rock. There's different costs. The vehicle cost, I wanted to include that, okay? 18 point million, that's for the actual subway train, okay? The road space required and how that actually works, and the time cost. How long does it take to actually get one of these things, okay? The Shepherd East original schedule, when it was approved originally, would have been seven years to complete 12 kilometers, okay? The Anglinton Crosstown, original schedule from approval to completion, 13 years for 25 kilometers. And the Spadani York Subway Extension, the one that's going on right now up to York University, it was 11 years from approval to, for 8.6 kilometers. Okay? There are differences and so much else depends. I just want to give you some examples to look at. 
What is it that's being built? Just to make sure. Now, some of this David talked about. First off, the rejected plan. Okay, this is what happened at the end of March. There was a big city council meeting.